Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is about determining horizontal and vertical asymptotes, both algebraically and graphically. Uh, please enter this function into your calculator. On a TI 84, you should be using the alpha F1 uh, feature to, um, so that it looks exactly like this. On a TI 83, it should look just like this. Uh, I'm noticing that some students could, be affor could afford to be a little bit more efficient in how they enter functions into their calculator. Uh, so for example, um, I've seen some students do things like this, enter 3, and then they're adding in extra sets of parentheses for some reason. And then they're doing, instead of just typing 6x, I'm seeing things like 6 times x, et cetera. Um, the extra parentheses, the times, that doesn't hurt, but I would uh, urge you to strive to be as efficient as possible um, to have your function look exactly the way that I have it looking up here for this example. Um, if you've done so correctly, your graph should look something like this uh, on zoom standard, zoom number six. So let's take a look at this algebraically. Now I wanted you to see graphically just real quickly just so we could uh, anticipate that we're going to see two vertical asymptotes and one horizontal asymptote. I want you to anticipate that, but again, let's, let's now do this algebraically. And I'm going to do this a little bit quickly for the sake of trying to keep the video as short as possible. Students, again, I, I, I'm relying on you to tell me, to give me feedback. Am I going too quickly to the point where this isn't even useful? Um, is it just right? Is it too slow? Are you still missing things? Please give me that feedback. Okay, so algebraically, I'm going to do some things that should look quite familiar. Um, we've done them before when searching for domain and range and doing various other things. Um, but let's start by uh, factoring the bottom. Uh, when we're looking for vertical asymptotes, uh, we, we're going to find that the denominator is really where our focus lies. Um, there are some rare exceptions where the numerator really comes into play, but um, I'll save that for another day. Let's focus on the denominator, and as such, I'm just going to put a squiggle here to, to um, as a placeholder for the numerator. But on the bottom, I'm going to start by writing it in standard form. Um, we find that a lot of times it's most useful to write it in standard form, which means that the, the um, exponents decrease. So here's an x squared term, followed by the x to the first power term, uh, followed by the 6. So that's in standard form. And our next step, hopefully you're anticipating where I'm going with this, I'm going to factor out the greatest common factor. Now you may be thinking the greatest common factor, is that 2? Uh, could be, but I'm going to say let's factor out a negative 2. I think that'll make our job easier in the end. And if I factor out a negative 2, that would leave me with an x squared. Again, hopefully you're anticipating, actively listening anticipating what I'm going to say. Oops, almost made a mistake there. Minus 2x and then minus 3. And finally, let's factor that quadratic um, expression into two linear binomial terms. And again, I hope you're anticipating this, that this is going to be an x, this is going to be an x, Let's put a 1 here, a 3 here, and this will be a minus 3 and a plus 1. Now, when we're doing domain and range, here's where I could see some, uh, um, some potential confusion. When we're doing domain and range, we said that this factor gave us the, the inequality that x could not be equal to negative 1. And we said that this factor told us that x could not be equal to positive 3. That's because we were talking about the function itself. And yes, in the function itself, x cannot be equal to negative 1 or positive 3. I'm going to erase some of this just to clear off some room for myself. But now we are trying to find the asymptotes. And the asymptotes represent these lines that the graph will never touch. So. Again, focusing on the vertical asymptotes. This is not the graph itself. These are the asymptotes. And the equation for this asymptote is x equals positive 1. And this one is x equals, I'm sorry, I messed up, x equals negative 1. My apologies. Let me fix that. 
and x equals positive 3. Those are the asymptotes. These are the, the lines that the graph will never touch. So on the actual graph itself, just to get my color coding consistent here, for these blue lines, or these blue curves, these inequalities over here do hold true. Those blue lines will never have an x value of negative, those blue curves will never have an x value of negative 1 or 3, but the green asymptotes do have x equals negative 1, x equals positive 3. If I've lost you on that, please come seek clarification during office hours. That's the algebraic uh, uh, solution, and, and we've kind of um, are looking at it graphically as well uh, here. Let's now algebraically determine what this um, horizontal asymptote is going to be, this one right here. All right, horizontally. Um, let me bring a, a graph onto the screen once again just to get the concept across. Notice that when I draw in my horizontal asymptotes that the asymptotic behavior, the location where the graph is getting really, really close to this, uh, to this line, occurs over here and over here. We're not really focusing on the middle here. We're focusing on large values of x, large positive values of x, and also large negative values of x. And we will represent that by saying x goes to infinity. That's where the asymptotic behavior occurs over here. And as x approaches negative infinity is where the asymptotic behavior occurs on the left-hand side of the graph. So with that in mind, let me uh, move some of the clutter out of the way. And let's ask ourselves what happens as x goes to positive infinity. Now what I found over the years uh, seems to get across to students most effectively is to say, well, infinity and a negative infinity, those are sort of these weird abstract concepts. So let's start by just thinking of what's a really big actual number for x. Let's say f of 1,000. Not quite infinity, of course, but it's a starting point. Let's say f of 1,000, and that's going to equal 3 times 1,000 squared, which is 1 million minus 6 times x, in this case 1,000, 3, all over 6 plus 4 times 1,000, minus 2 times 1,000 squared, again, 1 million. And I'm not going to break out my calculator at this point. I'm going to use some approximation. I'm going to say, uh, you know what, this 3 right here, is not very significant. It's pretty small compared to this 3 million. So for the sake of horizontal asymptotes, I'm just going to say that 3 doesn't really uh, uh, contribute much to this, uh, to this expression. Likewise, even though in some other problem 6,000 or negative 6,000 may seem like a big number in some other problem, when it's sitting right next to 3 million, even negative 6,000 is pretty small. So likewise, I'm going to cross that out and say that the bulk of uh, the value here is coming from this 3 million. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom, and I'm going to say that this 6 and that this 4,000 are pretty small compared to negative 2 million. Whoops. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say now that I've crossed those out, I want to acknowledge that I've crossed them out, that they do contribute a little bit, but not a lot. So I'm going to acknowledge that by saying that f of 1,000 approximately equals, I'm using that, that squiggly equal sign to say it approximately equals 3 times a, th um, a million on the top, all over, and that minus 2 million becomes negative 2 million. And now I'm looking at that and thinking, huh, I can just cross this million on top and this million on bottom divide each other out and I'm left with negative three halves. Now the question I ask you listening to this, will the y value of this function here, will the y value ever equal negative three halves? The answer is no, because remember we've done these approximations, we've crossed out these terms that don't contribute much. Those terms do make a little bit of difference. So um, the 6,000, the 3, the 6 here, and the, and the 4,000, those make a little bit of a difference. They will keep it from actually equaling negative 3 halves. 
but we're just going to say that the graph gets very, very close. Um, so if we look at the, um, at the, at the graph again, then I'm going to say as x goes towards uh, really, really big values, uh, so again, we're focusing on this part of the graph. As x goes in this direction, it is going to get closer and closer and closer to negative 3 halves, a y value of negative 3 halves. All right, if we did a similar thing for um, x approaching negative infinity, let me uh, just reduce some of this clutter here. If I did a similar thing, I'm not going to go through that whole explanation again, but I'll, I'll trust that you can kind of fill in the, the, whole, the holes here. If I said f of negative 1,000, I would come up with actually the same thing. It would really re come out to the same thing, and I would ask that you just sort of do that yourself and, and verify that you believe that that would also approach negative 3 halves. And I'll bring this back onto the screen and say, what that is telling us, or what that is explaining, is why as we go to the left here, as we go to the left, that y value is also approaching ne negative 3 halves. So the way we're going to write that, let me go ahead and go to the next screen here. To summarize what we found algebraically, we found that our, um, our vertical asymptotes were at x equals 3, x equals negative 1, and y equals negative 3 halves. I'm not sure I ever put that, that y equals negative 3 halves, but I'll put it there now that that is our horizontal line um, that the graph approaches. So let me ask you to now turn to your calculator again, and let's just verify that. Let's make sure that graphically we are 100% in agreement with our algebraic results. So here's my calculator. Computer's being a little bit slow bringing it up, but here we go. Um, I've entered my function. And let's uh, explore this x equals negative 1 here. If I go to trace and I type in negative 1, Hopefully you anticipated this, that there is no value here for the y. It's telling us that the graph itself doesn't have an x value of negative 1. Likewise, if I were to um, go to x equals 3 here, once again, there's no value. Now, now we should know that if I type in a value that's really, really close to that, hopefully you can anticipate what's going to happen. Do you know? 2.999, hopefully you anticipated that I'm going to get a really, really big value. And we've done things like this in class. Hopefully you, that makes sense why. If not, please take the time to, to ask for clarification because this is a major point. So we've done things like this with the vertical asymptote, so I'm not going to elaborate any further on that. What we have not explored as much is the horizontal asymptote. So let's really kind of focus on this y equals negative 3 halves here and how to verify that. I can start by going back to trace, and I can start hitting the arrow buttons. And as I go to the right, and you see the cursor here on the calculator going to the right here, does that y value approach negative 3 halves? I'm looking right here on the calculator screen. Is that approaching negative 3 halves, which we know as a decimal is negative 1.5? It, it sure looks conceivable, doesn't it? And as I keep pressing the arrow button, the calculator will adjust the screen accordingly. But this is taking a while, so I'm going to say let's, let's use our table to, to really just get there more quickly. Let me show you what I'm referring to. Let's go to our numerical model. Let's go to second table, and uh, depending on your calculator, you may see something like this. Uh, if I arrow up on the table, I'll see other values. If I arrow back down, I can get it to scroll back down. Notice the, the two errors here. That's where our horizontal, I'm sorry, that's where our vertical asymptotes were, right? x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. But I'm wanting to go to really, really big values of x, and, and kind of like scrolling on the, on the graph, this is taking a while. So here's the, the, the trick that I'd suggest. Go to second table set, which is right above the window button. And notice that when we go there, we can just type in a really big number. So let's type in that 1,000 that we were talking about earlier. 
And then when I go back to table, second table, as always, I hope you're following along here to get the most out of these lessons. Now it's jumped right over to 1,000, and I'm seeing that the, the graph is, the table is saying that it's actually achieved negative 1.5, but let's arrow over that and look down here in the calculator. Notice that, no, it didn't really get there. It just got really, really close. Uh, these columns in the table didn't have enough room, um, but it's got really, really close. Um, likewise, if I wanted to go to the, uh, to the left, I could go to second table set, and I could type in negative 1,000, go back to the table, and once again, it looks like it's achieved negative 1.5, but if I arrow over, I can see that, no, it's just gotten really, really close, and it'll never reach it. So I hope that made sense. We've uh, explored this and verified this graphically after doing it algebraically. So you know the drill by now. It's your turn to try. Find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of this function. Do so algebraically first, then pick up your calculator and confirm and explore graphically. So pause the video at this point, because I'm in just a moment I'm going to reveal the solutions. All right, so the solutions are here. Uh, your graph on Zoom Standard, if you uh, go to Zoom Standard, your graph should look something like this, and you should have found a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, as well as at x equals positive 5. And you should find your horizontal, should have found your horizontal asymptote at y equals 11 thirds. Notice that this exercise contradicts many people's impression of how asymptotes work. A lot of people are under the false impression that a graph can never cross its own asymptote. And that's not true. Um, notice here that the graph does come down and it does cross that horizontal asymptote. And I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. It comes down, it dips below. And then as long as it comes back up, and then as we continue to go to the left, as long as it proceeds to get closer and co closer to the horizontal line, we will still call that horizontal line an asymptote. It's OK that it crossed way back here near the middle of the graph. Um, notice that on the right-hand side, side, it did not do that. It did what we're more familiar with, where it just gets closer and closer Oops, not drawing that real well, but it gets closer and closer and never crosses the asymptote. That's what we're used to, but again, nothing wrong with crossing over here. I hope after you do a few of these that you find you're getting quicker at it, and pretty soon you'll find that you really don't really need the calculator. You'll be able to just look at this and, and tell right away what the horizontal asymptote's going to be, and without too much trouble, again, algebraically, hopefully you'll get in the rhythm of finding what the vertical asymptotes are as well.